Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials, bringing us from electromagnetism to optics. This is video number nine, and it's the second video on Maxwell's equations, and I'm going to derive the electromagnetic wave equation. The previous video to this, which is relevant, is number eight, where I, did, where I introduced Maxwell's equations. So, in this video, what we're going to do is, like I said, derive the wave equation, and we must start by making a small adjustment to Maxwell's equations. Just to note, or to, uh, to remind us, that we can have Maxwell's equations written in two different forms. They can have written in the integral form or the differential form. And I noted in the last video that the difference is as follows. In the integral form we usually derive and in the differential form we usually use. So if you're doing any manipulations it's usually the differential form you're going to use. And in order to go from the integral form to the differential form you need Stokes theorem and Green's theorem. Okay, so let's just rewrite Maxwell's equations in differential form. So if you look at the bottom, what we have is we have Gauss's law for electric fields, Faraday's law, Gauss's law for magnetic fields, and Ampere's law. Now, this, as it stands, it was very difficult to manipulate and Maxwell didn't manipulate the formulas in this particular form. What he did notice was that if you had no if you were in free space you had the we'll say the charge density was going to be equal to zero and you also had the current density was going to be equal to zero. So you had no electric charges. Now if you did that what happened was as follows. Now, that seems to be a good move because what we're after doing is we're after basically making Gauss's law for electric and magnetic fields the same. And also the curls, we'll say Faraday's and Ampere's law, look pretty similar with, this, with the exception of this multiplicative constant mu zero epsilon zero. So now what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate these. So you need to remember two things before you do this. In the videos when I discussed waves at the start of these, this tutorial series, I showed you the general form of a wave equation, and it is as follows. You take the Laplacian of your wave function, and it's going to be equal to one over v squared, the, time, the second derivative with respect to time of your wave function. So if we can manipulate the Maxwell's equations and get something like this, it would imply that what we actually have is a wave equation. And it was known at the time that Maxwell's equations governed light, so that it would suggest that light is an electromagnetic wave. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So the next thing we need to know is the vector cross product rule. Now I've derived it in my, in my lecture series going from the vector calculus for electromagnetism. But for our purposes, let's just accept that if you take the curl of the curl, what you get back is the following. And we'll see how that's used in a moment. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the curl of the curl, uh, oh sorry, excuse me, take the curl of both sides of Faraday's law. So we're going to have the curl of the electric field and take the curl of that again. And we're going to need to take the curl of minus del B del T. Now we assume that this is a well-behaved function, which means you can swap the time and spatial derivatives. So it means what we're going to get is minus del del t. We're going to have the curl of b. Like that. So I'm sure you can see where we're going to go. We're going to plug in the product rule. So this is going to turn out to be, we have the divergence of e here like this, minus the Laplacian of e. Now, on the right hand side we have minus del del t and we're going to sub in, we're going to sub in Ampere's law. So it's going to be mu zero, epsilon zero, the time rate of change of the electric field. All right? Now, if we look at Gauss's law for electric fields, we see that this term here goes to zero. 
So what we're left with is minus the Laplacian of E is equal to minus mu zero epsilon zero del two E dt squared. Okay, so the minus signs will say cancel in many respects. Now look what we have here. Let's just rewrite the wave equation. We've grad squared psi is equal to one over v squared del two psi del t squared. And that's exactly what we have. We have a wave equation. So the next thing Maxwell did was he compared the speeds. Now he, he had an idea of what mu zero epsilon zero's values were. Epsilon zero was, ma was measured uh, with capacitors. And I, to be honest, off the top of my head, I can't remember how they measured mu zero. Anyway, so all that means is that one over v squared was equal to mu zero epsilon zero. Or, excuse me, I had, we have v is equal to one over the square root of mu zero epsilon zero. And when Maxwell plugged in the values he had for mu zero and epsilon zero, he got the speed of light. Okay, so that's how we got, that's the, electromagnet, that's the electric wave equation. Now we're gonna get the magnetic wave equation. So what we're gonna do this time is take the curl of Ampere's law. So we're gonna take the curl, and we're gonna have the curl of V, the magnetic field. And this time we're gonna have the curl of mu zero, epsilon zero, del E del T. So we apply the vector product rule this. Now, same thing again. Once again, we can take out mu zero, epsilon zero, del del t and swap it with the curl. So we're going to get mu zero, epsilon zero. We're going to have the curl of the electric field. So we're going to swap in this time Faraday's law. So Faraday's law is simple. It's going to be mu zero, epsilon zero, and then we're going to have minus del b del t with also another del del t there. Mu zero, epsilon zero, del del t minus del b del t. Now, if we look at the left-hand side of this equation and we compare it with Gauss's law for magnetic fields, we see that this term here goes to zero. And what we're left with is that the Laplacian of the magnetic field is equal to mu zero epsilon zero del two b del t squared. Once again, we have another wave equation. All right, so just to write down the other one, we had that the Laplacian of E was equal to mu zero epsilon zero, oh, mu zero epsilon zero del two E del T squared. And these are the two electromagnetic wave equations. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me a comment in the box below.